Welcome back to Engineering Simplified. In this video, we are going to be talking about forward kinematics and we are going to do one example using a three hour robot. So just to refresh your memory, what is forward kinematics? It is basically going from the joint space to the tasa space or the end effector space. So what is the joint space? It is the space in which you have the robot parameters defined. So if I have a three hour robot, it is going to be the three angles of the revolute joint. And the end effector space or the task space is basically the location and orientation of the end effector. Here I have a three hour robot, which has three revolute joints. So it is a three degree of freedom robot. This is the kind of robot that you can expect to see in an in industry uh, where the application is such that there are two conveyor belts and you need to pick and move objects from one conveyor belt to the other. So in the very simplest of cases, you might be able to see this kind of a robot. So it is a three hour robot. So here I have marked out the rotation angles. So theta one is the rotation about this axis. Theta 2 is the rotation about this axis and theta 3 is the rotation about this axis. Now, since we are doing forward kinematics, what would be provided to us would be the exact values of theta 1, theta 2 and theta 3. And we need to figure out where the end effector would be based on those specific values of theta. So in order to figure that out first, what we need to do is we need to define the fixed frame and the moving frame. And as always, what we do is we define the fixed frame to be at the base of the robot. This is normally what we do. However, that isn't a, there isn't a composition for us to do it this way. And we can keep the fixed frame to be at any point in space. It can be at the edge of the room or at on one side of the conveyor belt or anything. So it doesn't really matter where the fixed frame is. You just need to have all the other frames defined with respect to the fixed frame. And the moving frame is defined at the tip of the end effector. So here I have defined it right here. So it is a gripper. So I have defined it at the base of the gripper. So this is my moving frame. And now what I need to find out is a homogeneous transformation matrix that takes the fixed frame to the end effector frame. And if I find out that homogeneous transformation matrix, then I should be able to extract the displacement vector out of it, which would give me the location of the end effector with respect to the fixed frame. So if you have a robot with you, you would know the physical parameters of the robot, which I have marked here, which are just the four lengths, A1, A2, A3, and A4. And what we are interested in finding is again, the homogeneous transform, which takes the fixed frame to the end effector frame. And if I draw it out here, so it takes this frame and it takes it all the way to this point right here. So this is what we are concerned with, right? So it takes this frame and it takes it all the way to the moving frame. Now, how do we find out this homogeneous transform? As we have done in the previous video, what we do is we break this homogeneous transform into a number of steps. So we break this hom single homogeneous transform into a bunch of different homogeneous transforms and we multiply them out together. So one way, notice that I'm saying one way because you can approach this in many several ways. So one way is to first do a homogeneous transform that takes the fixed frame and takes it to this point and then it takes this point to this and then it takes this to this and then it takes this to this. However, on reaching this end point, which is the end effector, you would realize that your frame is not going to be aligned with this, right? Because once you do all the homogeneous transforms and you get to this end point, your x axis is going to be in this manner. However, in the given diagram, there's a y axis in this direction. So you would need to do another homogeneous transform, which just has a rotation matrix inside of it and no displacement. And it rotates it such that my orientation becomes as desired. So notice that I said that this is just one way of doing the homogeneous transformations, right? So you can approach it in a number of ways. So 
so you can do it in this manner so th in this what i've done is there's h1 h2 h3 h4 and h5 so what i would do is i would first do h1 which is going to be simply a rotation about the z-axis and no displacement so the first your h1 is going to not take this fixed frame anywhere it is just going to keep it here but it is just going to rotate it then h2 is going to displace it and bring it right here and then rotate it h3 is going to just displace it with no rotation h4 is going to displace it and rotate it and then h5 is going to rotate it uh, displace it and rotate it as well and there are a number of different ways you can approach this so another way that you might want to approach it is instead of just doing the uh, first homogeneous transform which just has a rotation without displacement you can just combine the two and you can just call this to be h1 so first you displace and then rotate and then you can proceed in that manner i hope you get the idea of how to do it so i would encourage you to pause the video right now and try giving giving it a try and uh, see if you can make some progress into it and then you can play this video and see my solution of it I hope that you did give it a try. So let me show you my solution of it, the way that I would approach it. So here I have uh, expanded all of these five homogeneous transforms. So my H1 is going to be just a rotation about Z axis by theta one, no displacement. My H2 is going to be a displacement by this vector, which just takes it from here to here. And then it rotates it by oh, about the y axis by theta 2. And then I have another rotation, sorry, another homogeneous transform, which just displaces it from here to where, and there's no rotation involved. So you can see that there's no rotation. So I have an identity matrix here. And my identity matrix would simply be 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. So it is a three cross three matrix. So, so my H3 is going to be this, which is just a displacement with no rotation. Now my H4 is going to be a displacement and then a rotation. So H4 is going to take it from here to here and then rotate it. And then there's going to be my H5, which is first going to displace it, right? Once it displaces it, so my frame is going to be in this manner, X, Y, and Z. However, you see that the, my required orientation is this. So in order to do it, what I would do is I would first rotate it about the Y axis min minus 90 degrees. Um, and remember that positive, positive rotation is counterclockwise and negative is clockwise. So negative... Uh, 90 degrees what that would do is let me draw it out what that would do is it would uh, it would bring my x-axis here and my z-axis at the back and my y-axis would remain where it is and then what I would do is I would do an, a rotation about the x-axis by nine minus 90 degrees so a clockwise rotation about the x-axis and that would uh, make me get to the required orientation and that isn't the only way to get this required orientation instead of this i can do uh, another, take another approach so maybe one of the other approaches that i can take is instead of doing y by minus 90 degrees first um what i can do is um i can first uh, rotate by x by minus 90 degrees so if i do that so what that would mean is my x remains here and my z axis becomes here and my y axis goes down here. So now you see that my z axis is aligned with the direction of z axis that I wanted to. And now I can do a rotation about the z axis. So I can do a rotation about the z axis by minus 90 degrees. And if I do that, so uh, if I do that, uh, what I would get is basically my y-axis would become here and my x-axis goes up here. 
and that is what we want right so you get an idea that the homogeneous transformations the way that you get to the homogeneous homogeneous transformation is not unique however however the final homogeneous transformation that you are going to get which is this one right here the final homogeneous transformation that you are going to get is always going to be the same it doesn't matter what steps you take to get to that you can like do the way that i did by using five homogeneous you can even get clever and you can you do it using four homogeneous transformations uh, you can do six homogeneous transformations however many you like however once you multiply all of them out the homogeneous transformation that you are going to get at the end is going to be the same so one way that you can do it is probably like you can combine the these two homogeneous transforms into one so what you can uh, say is if you if you are if you have your uh, frame here and you want to go here so what you would do is you would uh, first displace it along the y axis by a3 and z axis by a2 and then rotate it so you can just combine these two together and you can just write uh this so there is a3 a2 1 0 0 0 so you are first displacing uh about two axes in one go so you displace about y axis by a2 and about z axis by along z axis by a3 and then you rotate it about the y axis by theta 3 so if you do it in this manner then you can combine couple of homogeneous transforms into one however the final homogeneous transform that you get is going to be the same so it does require a bit of practice to get good at it but once you do a bit of practice it becomes pretty easy uh, to do it for even more complex six degrees of freedom rewards I hope you found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And um, in the future videos, we are going to talk about inverse kinematics and we are going to take it from there. So I hope you found this video useful. And as always, see you in the next video. Bye bye.